Uh, also in Denmark, there is some reluctance to uh, the use of sludge in agriculture. Maybe we need some. Yes. Multitasking? <laughs> <laughs> no. But this is just to give one example of, of the reluctance uh, of using slots, the opposition of using slots. And this is from the uh, cooperation of uh, 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 drinking water and uh, waste water treatment uh, in Denmark, the suppliers of these services, which is actually the municipalities. So they have uh, an organization called this Danda Danish Water Organization, which uh, uh, says that, that uh, they don't recommend spreading sludge on agricultural land, especially when there's uh, uh, groundwater abstraction from uh, groundwater below this uh, uh, fields. So this is their approach, and the the reason the, the reason they give is this general EU principle, the precautionary principle. So. Uh, uh, this is an example, and, and uh, yes, uh, and, and it's a very general uh, argumentation they give. They say there's so many problems with allergy, where we don't know the reason. There's so many uh, toxic material in circulation in industries, in, 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 in also in households, which is up in the sludge. So it's better to use this precautionary principle. So, Denver supports this sludge incineration, which is also widespread in Denmark. I, I will come back to this later, the, the implication of, of, of this approach. But now we go to, to uh, the, the limit values, because uh, the limit values uh, uh, in, in the directive, which is a very old directive from 1986, uh, it, it's, you can say that it's more or less uh, outdated. So, but, but of course, countries can set more stringent uh, 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 limits than, than those specified in the directive. This is not only for Stuart's Law's directive, this is for all directives, that countries are allowed to set more stringent values and, and this is uh, the limit of heavy metals. Uh, one line missing? Yes. So you can <coughs> see, that, see that for this heavy metals, the content in sludge accepted in, in uh, according to Danish law on fuel sludge is much lower, especially for the most toxic heavy metals like cadmium and, and mercury. But also for the other heavy metals, the only one is, is that's not more stringent values is for copper, which is also a nutrient actually on the fields. Then the, the uh, directive does not specify <coughs> limit values for persistent organic pollutants. <coughs> And, and this, this, they are very widespread in use in also in both industries and households. So uh, uh, in the Danish legislation, there is uh, uh, specified the limit values for uh, this uh, uh, persistent organic pollutants. And, and there, and we need the next box also, there is some of this uh, limit values as specified in, 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 the, in the, 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 the legislation, the Danish legislation on, on, uh, on Stewart's Lodge. Okay, uh, the, the directive not only specifies uh, the content of, of, uh, of the heavy metals in or said, have limit values for the content in the slot, but also on the land where the, you put your your steward slot, so you don't build up very high levels of, of uh, heavy metals. And here we have uh, the limit values in the directives, and also here Denmark has some 
more stringent values in their legislation. Uh, how can you store uh, sewage sludge? Uh, and how, how can is it allowed to mix? This is an issue we discussed in our project. Uh, what is the experience in Denmark on these issues? And in Denmark, it's uh, allowed to mix sewage sludge before you bring it out on agricultural land. It's allowed to mix sewage sludge from different urban wastewater treatment plants. But the precondition is that the sewage loss from each of these wastewater treatment plants can fulfill the requirements. So you cannot, if you have one sewage treatment plant with high levels and another with low levels, you cannot mix them and then comply. Each batch of sewage loss has to comply with the rules. Uh, it's also allowed to store sewage slots on the farms, but only on a very special condition. So actually, this picture I have shown a couple of times, it's from an older uh, situation in Denmark, but it was allowed to store sewage slots on the field. It's no longer allowed because it gave very big problems, smell problems for the local population. So this situation is not legal anymore. Okay, then, then uh, I will say something about spreading sewage slots. And the first thing is that you don't need a permit to spread sewage slots on agricultural land. But before you spread your slots, you have to inform the municipality who is uh, the uh, authority and who has to control. And you has also the farmer has to inform the municipality about uh, the, the content of, of uh, heavy metals and, and uh, nutrients and, uh, and uh, persistent organic pollutants in, 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 their, uh, in, in the, the slots that they are going to spread. So they have to hand over some kind of declaration which follows the slots to the municipality which uh, uh, Yes, which then can, can uh, the municipality then control that the farmer fulfills the requirements in the, the uh, sewage slots uh, legislation. So this is, you can also say that the legislation is so detailed that you don't, if you make a permit, a special permit for spreading sewage lot, it would just be a repetition of what's already in the legislation. So if you fulfill the legislation, it's okay, but you have to prove that you fulfill the legislation. Then, so you don't need a specific permit. Uh, this, this issue of, of, of sewage lots has been very much discussed in Denmark, like we already have, have as in all other countries, I think, because it's, it's, a, it's a controversial issue. And, and uh, uh, in Denmark, we try to promote this uh, concept of, of, of the sewage lot directive that the spreading of uh, sewage slots on, on the agricultural land is the most sustainable solution because then you recirculate the nutrients in, in, uh, in the sewage slot and use them for production of crops. So, so we, we have this uh, same, uh, we, have, we, we follow this approach and, and the, the environmental agency in Denmark has tried to analyze what is the barriers for implementing the principles in, in the uh, EU sewage slots directive. And, and of course, there's this problem about that, that the sewage slots don't comply with the limit values. This is, in this, at this time, they made this analysis, this was approximately 50% of, of the wastewater treatment plants. We couldn't comply. 
Then, as we also already have discussed, there's some problems in cooperating with the farmers. They want this, this, because of this bad reputation of Stewart's Lodge, they, they uh, are reluctant to use it, even though it's an economic advantage for them, that there could be some, some uh, uh, problems uh, also. Uh, yes, then there is this smell problem, which has been very much in focus in Denmark, because people have been very much offended uh, because of smell from, from storing and spreading sewage sludge. Then there is uh, uh, this very complicated procedures that you have to follow as, as a farmer to, to use the sewage sludge. And then, as we already have discussed, sewage sludge has a bad reputation in the media. Uh, then also the, the uh, the Jewish lot producers, urban wastewater treatment plant, has to market their product towards the farmer. They, they, the farmers can choose between uh, uh, this product and, and uh, chemical fertilizer. So they have other uh, possibilities. So uh, this is uh, uh, some marketing is needed. And, and of course, it has to be price competitive also. And then there is, uh, because when you uh, sewage lots, you, when you have to spread it out, you also don't only need to transport the nutrients in the slots. This is a very uh, low part of, of the total uh, weight of the slots. The, the main part is, is the, the organic matter and the water in the slots. So, so there is, uh, it's huge lots, it's very costly to, to transport. Then there's some specific thing. I don't know how many other countries who use this approach, but, but taxation is a very important driver of, of using sewage lots on agricultural lands. In Denmark, we tax everything, also sewage lots. So there's a, 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 a tax on sewage lots, uh, 40 to 50 euro per ton. But you don't have to pay this tax if you spread it on agricultural land. So that's the main driver of using sewage lots as fertilizer. So, so if you put it on, on a landfill or burn it, you have to pay 40 to 50 euro per ton. <laughs> but but, but uh, not if you uh, uh, spread it on agricultural land. So this is a very efficient way to promote the, the use of, of Jewish lodge as a fertilizer. Okay, this is a, a very popular way of, of, of treating Jewish lodge putting them on such reed beds where they can lay for, for a period, maybe several years, and during that time, uh, the, the slots is dewatered, uh, uh, the organic matter is decomposed, and also uh, the pathogenic organism disappears from the slots. So, so this is a, a, an a efficient way to, to treat slots, but of course it's also you need a lot of land to do it this way. But uh, uh, in Denmark, we uh, produce around 140,000 uh, tons. This is data from 2002. 140,000 tons of, of sludge uh, measured as prime matter so without any water is 140,000 tons. 59% of this was used in 2002, brought out of land to use it as uh, uh, fertilizer. 7% uh, was stored on, on this uh, 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 reed beds uh, for, for to, to mineralize and, and be processed in this way. 16% was uh, used as fuel incinerated. 
six percent was uh, uh, dispersed on, on, on sanitary landfill and 12 percent for other use and this is important that this is figures from 2002 in this period from 2002 to uh, 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 the, uh, the, to 2011 to, to 12, the, there has been a marked increase in, in the amount of sludge brought up to, to, uh, to uh, use as a fertilizer brought out on agricultural land. So there has been an improvement, and I think it's because uh, 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 the, the uh, operators of the wastewater treatment plant has improve their capacities to handle the sludge so they avoid some of the problems the, the industries has uh, become better in, 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 uh, in minimizing the loss of, of, of heavy metals and, 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 uh, and persistent organic pollutants there's maybe also been a better control of the use of persistent organic pollutants in household products so all together, this has led to this increase of the use of the uh, 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 huge lots as a fertilizer. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? For the next presentation, we have uh, tried to assess what uh, the cost of implementing this sewage sludge directive may, um, may, may be in, in Albania based on uh, actually not many data we had available. But, uh, and, and I think Jesper is going to present the results of this assessment right now. Okay. At least number one is we, we remove uh, uh, very big material, plastic bags and so on. The next step in the treatment process is to remove uh, 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 inert organic material, material sand and, and, and gravel and so on. And, and this is uh, in, in this Kavaya uh, uh, and Propra, uh, uh, the wastewater treatment plants here in Albania, as far as I have read, they have not included this uh, removal of sand, this uh, step number two. And this creates some uh, uh, severe operational problems for this two uh, uh, wastewater treatment plants. So this is an important step also, even though if it's not uh, a very big part of the whole treatment process. But then the next step is uh, 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 the primary uh, 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 sedimentation of, of, of the uh, material in the sludge, uh, in the wastewater. Uh, from there, you uh, uh, pump the wastewater to the, the bio bioreactor where, where uh, uh, bacteria and, and uh, fungi uh, work with, with the organic materia and, and remove both organic materia and nutrients from, from the, the water and uh, uh, then uh, the next step is that you you uh, 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 clarify the water, you, you settle this uh, 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 fungi and bacteria. Some of them you pump back so they can, can work on, on, on the, the sewage, and some of them you, uh, you uh, 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 settle out, and, and then you have, this is your slots. So the whole wastewater treatment plant First, you use, you can say you use water to transport waste, and then in the wastewater treatment plant, you have to, you try to split water and waste again. So you have the clean water in the outlet, and you have the sludge with, with the, the pollutants. And in this sludge, you also get most of the heavy metals and the persistent organic pollutants. They, it uh, tends to adhere to this particles which is, which is settled in, in the, the primary and secondary uh, clarifiers. 
and, and the wastewater treatment plants <coughs> look more or less similar all over the world uh, because this is a very efficient way in terms of it. Uh, both efficiency and energy consumption and, and the production cost to build big wastewater treatment plants. So if you build one here in Tirana, I would expect it would look the, as seen on this figure. So you have the, the different steps. So the water comes in here, the water comes in here, you have the screen facilities and, and this uh, removal of sand. You have the, the primary sediment, sedimentation. Uh, you, you pump it here to, to the, the, the organic, the, this, uh, what was it called? Bioreactor, and then here you, you remove the, the bacteria and, and the fungi which has worked on the, the, uh, the material in, in, the, uh, in the wastewater. And from this you produce sludge, which is then digested, processed in these tanks, and then they can be further pumped to these reed beds that I'm talking about for, for, for the further the processing. Uh, the, the sewage slot directive is of course very closely linked to the EU urban wastewater treatment directive because sewage slots is a byproduct of urban wastewater treatment. So if we look at this, uh, if, if we look at this plan for implementation of the urban wastewater treatment plant, uh, urban wastewater treatment directive for Albania, uh, we come out with this result that it would be extremely costly in Albania, as in all other countries, to implement these directives. And uh, uh, the directive has calculated that there will be uh, 200 units where you should uh, 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 process or treat wastewater in accordance with the urban wastewater treatment directive and this will cover approximately 3 million person units which is both uh, persons and, and other kind of uh, production which uh, produce more or less the same type of, of wastewater as uh, humans does uh, food industry mainly. So there will be approximately 3 million of this uh, 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 person units which has to be processed in urban wastewater treatment plants in Albania. So this is a very long process to build all this uh, wastewater treatment plants and to make them operational. And uh, in this uh, 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 directive specific implementation plan for this urban wastewater treatment directive which has been made by this project uh, it has estimated that it will take 18 years to implement the directive so, so what, what actually the the as, as a sewage lodge is a part of, 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 of the, the whole wastewater production of sewage lots is a part of the whole wastewater treatment process. You cannot take it out and say this has a separate cost of producing sewage lots. It, it's, it's a part of the whole uh, treatment process which has to be covered by fees from the one who produce the, the sewage, the households, and the industries. So, uh, uh, I have said that, that the cost of transporting sewage slots <coughs> from the treatment plant to the, the, the place where it's uh, disposed is a, a cost uh, 
for use uh, to the farms is a cost which is uh, 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 can be attributed to the sewage lots directly, directly and also spreading the sludge on agriculture land. I would just go back to another issue, uh, the timing of this implementation. So you can see that, that it's, it's not a very complicated directive to, to transpose into Albanian legislation. It's, uh, compared to many other directives, it's relatively simple. So it's, it's, not, it's not that that takes time. What takes time is, of course, to build all the wastewater treatment plants. And then I have said that if, if it's, uh, this implementation is in parallel with the wastewater treatment plant, you have to add some additional year before all the sludge which is produced from the wastewater treatment plant is ready for spreading on agricultural land. So I have added some extra three years to, to this 18 years. And here's a more specified, I will not go through this, it just shows all the requirements of, of the, the sewage loss directive and, and how, who, which uh, authorities that, that the, is responsible and, and the timing of when these different requirements could be implemented in, in practice here in the Bay. Then I will say something about the benefits because, of course, all this EU directive, they are not made to bother member states and, and people living in, in, the, in the EU countries. They are made because it will add a value to the life of people living in, and in the, the EU countries and because the benefits of the transposing directive is bigger than the cost. This is the whole idea of making environmental legislation, that it has some advantages for human health, for, for our uh, living quality, for, for the nature, that, that is bigger than the cost of, of uh, implementing all these measures. And, and the idea of, of, of the huge lots directive is to to close uh, the, the cycles of, of nutrients so we reuse as much uh, of, of, of the nutrients in the, the, the wastewater in the sewage sludge in a sustainable way. And, and sewage sludge is actually a, a very good fertilizer. It contains a lot of, of nutrients, especially phosphorus, but also uh, nitrogen and, and micronutrients. It also has a lot of organic matter, which improves uh, the soil structure. So, so it's, it's, it's uh, a valuable uh, 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 source of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, of Yes, enrichment of what the uh, more of uh, fertilizing the soil. So you can calculate what is actually if you just the value of nitrogen, the nitrogen and phosphorus, not of the micronutrients or, or the structure improvement, but the value of, of nitrogen and phosphorus if you compare with what would be the cost to buy these uh, nutrients instead in chemical fertilizer, you can come out with this uh, value of approximately the value of when, when fully implemented, when the urban wastewater treatment directive is fully implemented, the value of the nutrients in the sludge will be around 4 million euro per year. And then, then uh, we have also made some calculations of the cost. There is some, some running cost and, and some capital cost. And the capital cost is mainly some uh, technical assistance project to, to do training and, and, and make uh, 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 
databases and so on. And, and this is, of course, uh, a, minor, a minor part of the total cost. But you can say, see here that the main cost is the transport of the sludge from the urban wastewater treatment plant to the farmers. And you can say maybe this should not be a cost for implementing sewage slots directly, because if you want to use it as, as, as fuel in, 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 in some uh, 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 incineration plants, or if you want to use it in the cement industry, or if you should uh, dispose it on, on, uh, on a sanitary landfill, you will also need to transport it. So you, in a way, you can say that you can take out this transport, which is the major part of the total cost. So then the, the dominating cost will be the cost for spreading the sludge on agricultural land. OK, this was my last slide. Thank you. And this is general cost for all citizens in the country. Of course, this is based on the polluter pays principle. So the, the individual household and the industries has to pay in relation of how much water they use and how much wastewater they produce. You can monitor this in each and every household. Uh, this is done in Denmark. So you pay per cubic meter. But then it's much cheaper uh, to to uh, uh, this uh, unit cost is much lower in, in 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 big cities with big treatment plants because you have it's more efficient to run them than in small cities with with small wastewater treatment plants. This has been a, a very controversial issue also because when the poor people which lives in small <laughs> villages in 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 the, the more less wealthy parts of, of the country, they are paying the highest uh, fees for, for uh, 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 sewage uh, 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 services. So, so this can be a controversial issue, this uh, polluter pays principle. Okay, but the question was, uh, how much pay family yeah, but you can, you per can year? Course, average price. Yeah, but, but if we go back, we can calculate it ourselves. If we go back, back. No, no, in Denmark. Yeah. In Denmark. In Denmark. Yeah. But but I have to look it up. I don't have the figure. Actually. Yeah. But I know it's very very different from from household to and household. How is calculated for Albania? Yeah, but you can divide this uh, uh, total price. Of, of uh, 52 million euro with the 3 million uh, person equivalent to get some estimate on, on the, the total price. If you divide the 52 million euro running cost with the 3 million, you get some estimate of the, the price per person. Zone me banim ja shtet, di zon sub sub zone. Ci mutiam 200 apo 500 apo 100 familje. 
Adere samaj bogor, samaj samaj maj mala, ajt maj rentabil. Po kruž maj bogor, če prti vendje šte, se ne kemi šum tila. This is actually a demo, this is not an agglomeration based, it's municipality based. So it, you have municipalities which have a lot of those uh, small agglomerations and, and the big agglomerations. They pay, you make a mean of all this, so, so it's not based on, on the individual treatment plant, it's actually based on the municipality. So you pay all the household in this uh, municipality, pays the same unit cost for uh, disposal of uh, uh, wastewater. So, so in this way you can cover some of, of the cost of this uh, small uh, uh, villages. Experience in Greece for agglomerations, say, say below 10,000 B, because you're absolutely right, in, in big agglomerations the economics are totally different. But for the wastewater, urban wastewater direct implementation, which means sewage system and treatment plan, it's in the figure of 1,000 to 1,500 euros per capita. That's the rough uh, estimate that we have for this kind of uh, place. But if we took at bigger cities, of course, it's, it's much cheaper. It's much cheaper. But for the big sum, uh, below, say, 10,000, it's, it's around this figure. 1,000, 1,000. And sometimes we have, in very spread agglomerations, we have a much higher cost, but then we drop them out because we think that we should concentrate on whether the density is adequate enough to, to provide a reasonable cost. Uh, the question I would like to ask is, this, uh, this uh, sludge tax that you mentioned, yes. 40 to 50, uh, is it an old uh, tax? When was it introduced in Denmark, if you remember roughly? Yeah, it's many years. Uh, as far as I remember, this sludge tax has been operational for at least the last 15 years, so it, it's, it's not a new invention. 